Hi everyone, I'm BK Gu from Seoul National University Hospital, Seoul, Korea. So today I'd like to share the results or the take home message of the recently performed a randomized clinical trial, the FLAVOR trial. So the background of this study is that we know that the prognosis of patients with coronary artery disease is determined by multiple factors, not simply by one or two factors. And those multiple factors are kind of degree of luminal narrowing, plaque burden, plaque characteristics, physiologic significance, and also the abruptness of revascularization procedure. So for that, we all know that there are several limitations of invasive angiography. And that's the reason why in the cath lab, we are frequently use the adjunctive tools such as a fractional flow reserve or the intravasculature sound. However, these two commonly used tools investigate and present the different aspect of coronary artery disease and different strengths and weaknesses. So we need to have an answer for the question about which approach can bring better clinical and patient reported outcome. So that, that's the reason why we design and perform this randomized clinical study. So this study, the FLAVOR trial is an investigator initiated prospective randomized multiple, multinational trial. And the purpose of this study was to compare the efficacy of FFR guided PCI strategy with intravascular ultrasound guided PCI strategy in patients with coronary artery disease. So for that, our, the primary endpoint of our study was that patient-oriented composite outcome, which was a composite of death from any cause, NMI, and any revascularization at two years after the index procedure. And when we perform the sample size calculation according to the non-inferiority margin of 2.5% and 90% power, we need 1,700 patients. So basically, we enrolled 1,700 patients and randomized 1,682 patients. So those were randomized into the FFR-guided PCI group and uh, IVUS guided PCI group. And we also have a criteria for PCI and, and also the optimization. So indication of, for PCI in FFR group was that the standard criteria is 0.8 or less. And for IVUS criteria for PCI was that the lumen area three or less square millimeter or in case of three between MLA three and four, plaque burden 70% of, of more. So those are the basic scheme of our study. For the key findings of this, our study, so as this was a randomized study, there was no difference in baseline characteristics, patient level characteristics between the FFR arm and the IVUS arm. And the mean FFR value in the FFR group was 0.83 and mean lumen area in the IOS arm was 3.4 square millimeter, which means that the both are uh, meeting the criteria for intermediate stenosis. Due to the different PCI criteria, target vessel PCI rate was significantly lower in FFR guided PCR arm, which was 33% in IOS guided PCR arm target vessel PCI rate was 58%. So accordingly, more patients received antiplatelet agent, including dual antiplatelet therapy. So the primary outcome, which was a two-year POCO rate, the event rate was 8.5% in the IVUS group and 8.1% in the FFR group. And the absolute difference was minus 0.4%. And the range of the 95% confidence interval was within the pre-specified 1930 margin of 2.5%. So this was the same with the per protocol analysis in which the difference in risk was minus 0.5%. And still the upper range of 95% confidence interval was 2.3%. 
below the margin of 2.5%. And we also analyzed the patient reported outcome using Seattle Angina questionnaires. So there were no differences between the FFR guided PCI group and IVUS guided PCI group in terms of the patient reported outcomes in all SAQ scores. So basically, click outcomes and patient-oriented outcomes, there was no difference. What was interesting in our analysis was that the implication of optimal PCI on patient outcome. So according to the pre-specified criteria, optimal PCI achieved 50% in FFR-guided PCI group and 55% in IVUS-guided PCI group. What was interesting was that the, there was no difference in the outcomes in the medical treatment group in both arms. But the, when we compare the outcomes of the optimal and CCI group between FFR and IVUS guided PCI, we found that the, the best outcome was achieved in those who had an optimal PCI criteria by the IVUS. So this is interesting finding, but needs a further investigation. I can summarize the key results of our study as in patients who have an intermediate degree of stenosis in comparison with the IFUS guided PCI, FFR guided PCI was non inferior in, with respect to a clinical endpoint, and FFR guided PCI was associated with a low rate of stent implantation without the difference in patient reported outcomes between the two strategies. So the clinical implication of this study will be that the, there are several recent papers showing that the physiology may not be as good as an NGO or the image may be better, vulnerability concept may be better, but the, our study supports that still the physiology-based decision and revascularization should be the standard practice in patients with the intermediate coronary stenosis. We plan several predefined and postdoc analysis. So first thing is that the, as the cost issue and clinically and socioeconomical impact should be analyzed between these two different strategy, we will run a cost-effective analysis using our data. And we also further analyze the impact of PCI optimization by IVUS and FFR. And what we also have interest in is to define the prognostic determinants in the medical treatment group or the deferred group, deferral PCI group in FFR and IBUS group to define whether there is a way to improve the patients who are under medical treatment. And what will be also interesting is that the, we are running a NGO derived FFR call lab and also the intravascular ultrasound derived core lab to perform the image-based physiologic assessment. And it will be very interesting that the implication in terms of prognosis of those image-based novel physiologic assessment in your future. So what I have learned from this trial is that the, this trial is teaching me that the physiology-based PCI should still be the standard in patients with the intermediate coronary artery stenosis. However, we found some signal that the benefit of IVUS guided optima, PCI optimization. So we have to work more for the role of imaging in PCI optimization. In the end, I would say that the further studies are definitely needed to investigate the role of vulnerability and novel image-based physiologic assessment in the treatment decision and optimization.